Setting up a new development environment can be a hassle, but what if you could streamline it directly from your GitHub repository with no extra steps required? In this video, we're going to take a look at the power and efficiency of GitHub code spaces. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's get started. GitHub Code Spaces is essentially a full development environment hosted in the cloud. Each code space is hosted in a Docker container on a virtual machine, and it basically ends up looking like VS Code in the browser. There are several benefits to using code spaces for development. Number one, a pre-configured development environment. Your code space will have all the tools that you want or need already installed so that you can just get started working on whatever project you want to work on. This also makes it really easy to try out new frameworks without having to install a bunch of extra stuff on your computer or going through a complicated setup. Number two, your computer may not be powerful enough. Not everyone has access to a powerful computer that has the resources needed for developing. As long as you have a stable internet connection, you can work from anywhere on whatever device that you have, including a mobile device. Number three, you can publish your app directly from Codespaces. This allows people to see the changes you've made directly on the computer as you make the changes in real time. Number four, separate working environments for each project. By using GitHub Codespaces, you can save time without having to change your local setup every time you work on a different project. This can include things like changing the version of Node installed. There are a few different ways you can create a GitHub code space. The first of which is to navigate to the GitHub repository that you want to work on and click on the code button and select code spaces. Here you can click on create code space on master which will create a code space with the default options. Alternatively, you can click on the three dots and click on new with options. This will allow you to customize things such as the branch, region, and machine type. Once you have the options that you want, just click on create code space. The setup happens pretty quickly, and once it's done, you can see that we have a full VS Code editor right here in the browser. You can also navigate to github.com forward slash code spaces. I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description. And once you're here, you can choose a couple of different templates. We can also click on see all and see that we have a few more templates to choose from here. So now if we want to create a next.js project, we can just say, use this template. Let's try that out. And there we have it, a full development environment ready to work on our next.js project. Navigating the code space interface is very similar to VS Code. We even have an integrated terminal that is really just a terminal inside the Docker container. One of the differences between the code space and VS Code is we have this ports tab. If we click on it, we can see that the Docker container is forwarding port 3000 and here is the address that we can follow to view our application. If you want to share what you're working on with someone else, just right click on this and under port visibility, change it to public. Now you can share this URL with anyone else in the world and they can see the application you're working on. If I press Command Shift P or Control Shift P on Windows, I can see that I get the command palette just like in VS Code on a desktop computer. The only difference is there are a couple of options that are specific to code spaces, such as rebuilding the container, sending feedback, stopping the code space, opening VS Code desktop, and several other things. If you want, you can change the extensions that are installed in your code space. You can customize the theme. So for example, if I wanna change this to the Hopper theme, I can change it right there in the code space. The code space allows you to turn on sync settings so that you can sync the settings between your code spaces and VS Code running on your desktop. When you're done working on your project, just come down here and click on the blue bar that says code spaces and the name of your code space, and then choose stop current code space. If you don't, the code space will actually just keep running and you'll continue to be billed for that until it times out. The default time for that is 30 minutes. So be sure to stop the code space rather than just closing out the tab. And here we can see that the code space is stopping and we have the option to start it back. Now, if I navigate to github.com forward slash code spaces, I can see that I have my next JS code space, but it's not currently running. And here I have a few options like deleting it or changing the machine type. I can also open it back up and resume working on it. I mentioned that the default timeout is 30 minutes. We can change that by navigating to our profile, choosing settings, and then choosing code spaces. And then if I scroll down to almost the bottom, and here is the default idle timeout. We can change this to something like 10 minutes and click save. 
We can also set other things such as how long to keep the code space after it's been inactive. The default is 30 days here. And also what the default region is for when we create a code space. Another thing that can be found here is code space secrets. This is things that you don't want to put in your code that can be exported as environment variables. So for example, I can choose new secret, name the secret, my underscore secret. And then you'll have to select the repository that has access to this secret. And now we can see that we have one GitHub secret. Now in the code space for that repository, I can echo my secret and get the value of that environmental variable. Another thing we can do is if we come down and click on the code space, we can choose open in VS Code desktop. Here we'll click open VS Code. We'll have to install a couple of things here and then click allow authorize VS Code, and then open VS Code, click open. So a few setup items there. And now we can make changes to the code and see it directly in the code space. So if I change portfolio site to portfolio sites and hit save, we can see our changes right here in the code space. Another really cool thing you can do is collaborate in code spaces. I have an entire video on using LiveShare. You can check that out right here, but essentially just install the LiveShare extension and then open it up and click on share. Also, another really important thing to note is you should still commit your changes to GitHub and not just leave them in the code space. You don't want to accidentally delete the code space or have it cleaned up after 30 days and lose your changes. This will also allow you to seamlessly transition between environments and see the changes that you've made. So now let's talk about how much does using a code space actually cost. GitHub code spaces start out free and then you cross over to a pay as you go plan. You're billed in core hours per month. At the time of this recording, if you have GitHub free, you start out with 120 core hours per month. And if you have GitHub Pro, you have 180 core hours per month that are free. GitHub Student also gives you 180 core hours. So now let's talk about the core hours. The cheapest code space is two cores, meaning you get 60 hours for free on the free plan of using that code space. If you bump up your code space to a four core, then you get 30 hours. After that, you'll pay the price in this column for the corresponding code space. So for example, if you need a 32 core code space, you'll pay 288 per hour. So how much does this end up being? If you only need a two core code space, you can use it for 40 hours a week, and that's $7.20. If you do four weeks, it's around $30. So still way cheaper than buying a computer, but it's also only a two core code space. And that's assuming you're gonna use it for 40 hours per week. If you use it efficiently and be sure to stop the code space every time you're not actively using it, you can probably use it less than 40 hours on a normal work week. So now let's go over the cons of using a GitHub code space for your development. There are two main cons. The first is pricing. It can get really costly if you're using it full time and need several CPU cores. The second is you're dependent on a stable internet connection and high latency could be a problem. But if you're looking to quickly try out a framework or work on something really quickly or you don't need a whole lot of CPU cores, GitHub Codespaces is great. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this other video where I talk about something really cool. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.